Hey everyone, it's Gus from Pi My Life Up, and today I'll be going through the steps on how to connect a 16x2 display to the Raspberry Pi. A 16x2 display, unlike a touch screen or a normal LCD screen, is best used to display short messages. You'll find it extremely handy when you only want to display some essential data, but don't really need a large expensive display. This tutorial will go through all the basics to getting the screen set up. It is incredibly handy for anyone who is completely new to electronics. The pot, or also known as a potentiometer, is pretty important for controlling the screen contrast. If you do not have one, then you can try swapping this out for a resistor. I would try using something higher than 5k ohms. A typical 16x2 LCD display has 16 pins, but not all of them need to be used. Since there are 16 pins, you'll find that the display will be most likely using a HD44780 controller. This makes the display pretty versatile and can be used across a wide range of devices. For example, this display I've used previously in an LCD tutorial for the Arduino that you can check out here. You will find that most 16x2 displays do not come with a header pins pre-installed. This means you'll need to solder some header pins on. This is a pretty straightforward task and should only take a few minutes for anyone who has soldered before. Place the header pins through the holes of the display. The short side of the header pins should stick up. Now using a hot soldering iron and some solder, slowly solder each of the pins. Once you're done, it's now ready to use. Now to just quickly go through the equipment that you will need, a 16x2 LCD with header pins, a 10k ohm potentiometer, breadboard, breadboard wire, you can use a breakout kit if you want, and of course a Raspberry Pi. So to begin, first place a wire from a 5 volt pin, pin 2, to the positive rail on the breadboard. Now place a wire from the ground pin, or pin 6, to the ground rail on the breadboard. Now place the 16x2 display onto the breadboard. Now place the potentiometer onto the breadboard and connect the positive and ground pins to the relevant rails on the breadboard. Now starting from pin 1 of the LCD which is the pin closest to the edge of the board. Now pin 1 is ground and this goes to the ground rail. Pin 2 is 5 volts and this goes to the positive rail. Pin 3 is V0 and controls the contrast. This goes to the middle wire of a potentiometer. Pin 4 is register select and this goes to GPO25 or pin 22 if you're using physical numbering. Pin 5 is read and write pin and this goes to the ground rail. Pin 6 is the enable signal pin and this goes to GPO24 or pin 18. Pin 11 is the data pin and this goes to GPIO 23 or pin 16. Pin 12 is a data pin and goes to GPIO 17 or pin 11. Pin 13 is again a data pin and goes to GPIO 18 or pin 12. Pin 14 is again another data pin and goes to GPIO 22 or pin 15. Pin 15 is the LED positive pin and this goes to the positive rail. Pin 16 is the LED ground pin and this goes to the ground rail. Now that's all you need to do. The screen should now be able to turn on and communicate with the Raspberry Pi without any issues. If you run into any issues, then be sure to refer to the circuit diagram over at PyMyLifeUp.com. On the latest version of Raspbian, all the required packages are pre-installed for communicating with GPO devices. You should find that Python is also installed. If you're running a previous version of Raspbian, then it might be worth checking out my video on getting started with the Raspberry Pi's GPO pins. Alternatively, upgrading should install all the required packages. Now in this example, I'm going to install and use a Python library from Adafruit. It's designed for Adafruit LCD boards, but will also work with other brands as well. If your board uses a HD44780 controller, then it should work with no issues at all. So to begin, we want to clone the git package. To do this, simply enter git clone https sending colon slash slash github.com slash adafruit slash adafruit underscore python underscore char lcd dot git. 
Once that's finished, change into the git directory dot slash adafruit underscore python underscore char lcd. Keep in mind this is case sensitive. Once you're in the folder, simply run the setup file by entering the following python setup.py install. Once set up, you can now call the Adafruit library in any Python script on the Pi. To include it, just add the import line at the top of a Python script. The line is import Adafruit underscore char lcd. Now communicating with a 16x2 display is very easy thanks to the library provided by Adafruit. It makes it incredibly easy to write Python scripts to set up and alter the display. In the folder that we just downloaded, there are a few examples on how we can use the LCD library. If you want to check out one of the examples, simply navigate the examples folder by entering cd tilde forward slash adafruit underscore python underscore char lcd slash examples slash. Now you can open up the file by entering the following sudo nano char underscore lcd dot py. It's important to note that before you run any of these examples that you update the pin variables at the top of a file. If you followed my circuit, the following values are the correct ones. LCD underscore RS is 25. LCD underscore EN is 24. LCD underscore D4 is 23. LCD underscore D5 is 17. LCD underscore D6 is 18. LCD underscore D7 is 22. And LCD underscore backlight is 4. To initialize the LCD board, you'll need to create the class object. Make sure all the variables that are being passed as parameters are defined before calling the class. It's important to also make sure you both have LCD columns and LCD rows also defined before calling this class. For most displays, this is simply 16 columns and two rows. Once that's done, you can then use methods to alter the output on the display. I'll quickly go through some of the methods that are available to you using the Adafruit library. Message simply writes text to the display. You can include new lines, backslash n, in your message as well. Time.sleep just puts the script to sleep for a specific amount of time. This is a Python package and not related to the Adafruit library. The clear method clears the LCD so that it's completely blank. Show underscore cursor, this either shows or hides the cursor. Set it to true if you want it to be displayed. Blink turns off or on a blinking cursor. Again, set this to true if you want it to be blinking. Move underscore left or move underscore right moves the cursor either left or right by one position. For example, this for loop will move the text for the length of a message. Set underscore cursor will move the cursor to a specific position. You specify the position by passing the column and row numbers as parameters. For example, set underscore cursor 5 comma 2 will set the cursor in the fifth column on row 2. The home method will move the cursor back to home, which is the first column on the first line. Enable display either enables or disables the display. Set it to true to enable it. Set underscore right underscore two underscore left or set underscore left underscore two underscore right sets the cursor direction either left to right or right to left. For auto scroll, if it's set to true, then the text will write justify from the cursor. If set to false, then it will left justify the text. There are a few more methods, but it's unlikely that you'll need to use them. If you want to find all the methods, just simply open up the adafruit underscore char lcd.py file. Now exit this file by pressing Ctrl X and then Y. Now to run this code, simply enter Python followed by the file name, Python char underscore lcd.py. If the display isn't showing anything when your Python script is running, then it's likely the pins defined in your script are wrong. It would also be worth double checking the connections on the breadboard. 
This tutorial just covers the basics of setting up the 16x2 LCD display correctly with Raspberry Pi. There is so much more you're able to do with this. For example, you can have a script launch and boot up that can display certain values such as a IP address, time and so much more. There is also a huge range of cool sensors that you should try incorporating with this display. Something like the DS18B20 temperature sensor would work great with the display. Simply update the display every few seconds with a new temperature. I hope this tutorial has helped you with connecting the 16x2 display to the Raspberry Pi. If you do notice a mistake, come across an issue, or I got anything wrong, or you just want to leave some feedback, then please don't hesitate to leave a comment below or over at PyMyLifeUp.com. Until next time, have a good one. Looking for more Pi projects to do? Check out these 21 awesome Pi projects that anyone can do. Don't forget to subscribe so you can stay up to date with the latest and greatest projects, guides and much more.